Uh, did you guys have a nice uh, pandemic? <laughs> did you enjoy? I did not, thumbs down from me. Uh, Cause I had to work my day job. Uh, I'm a social worker. Um, <laughs> Please hold your applause, it's God's work. <laughs> That's what my boss tells us so they don't have to pay us a living wage, right? <laughs> Can't complain in case he's real. <laughs> I work in a hospital and they, were any of you guys like essential workers during the pandemic? Anybody work in healthcare yet? <laughs> Tell me if you got an email like this, right? Like halfway through the pandemic, did you get the like, hey, valued essential workers, we appreciate you and everything you've done to support our communities during these unprecedented times. Here is an email survey. Let us know what you need to feel appreciated. And we were like, thank you so much. We would like $20,000 more in our salaries. And they said, loud and clear, fleece jackets for everyone. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's what everyone wants to wear, right? Hospital branded attire. So you look like you showed up at an ER naked and that's what they sent you home in. <laughs> I do uh, emergency mental health crisis screenings. So yeah, I get paid to evaluate other people's emotional stability, which, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know who okayed that, but here we are, no takesies backsies. <laughs> I work uh, mostly with kids, which has made me never want to have them. Uh, and I say that about 400 times a day at work. Like a mom will come in and be like, my son kicked me in the face and called me the C word. And I'm just like, oh, I'm never doing that. That's never gonna be my life. Which is rude to say to her in front of her kid, you know, so. My boss and I had a teaching moment about that. It was helpful. But I've gone off the rails now. Any minor inconvenience caused by a child, I'm just like, nope. If someone's like, oh, my kid has food allergies, I'm like, Pfft. I am never accommodating that. Nah, this is a peanut butter household, Timmy. You can get on board or you can get the hell out. This is an EpiPen free zone. Those are $600 a piece right now. You can get a job or ask Santa. We're not. We're not no, no, no. It's a tough job. Here's the thing. There's gonna come a point, everyone who works in a helping profession, like there's gonna come a day when you wake up and you're like, done, not helping anyone ever again for the rest of my life. Not saying God bless you when anyone sneezes. Good luck humanity, you're on your own. So I have to plan for that, right? So I planned a second career, right? So here's the idea, tell me what you think, right? I think I wanna do commercials, right? A lot of comics to make extra money will do commercials. They pay really well. But here's the thing, for younger women, I'm still in my 30s, for younger women, they're typically looking for thinner women. You guys look confused, I'm heavy. You can't tell because my haircut is very flattering, <laughs> but I don't wanna have secrets from you. So let's move forward together in honesty, yeah? <laughs> So they're typically looking for thinner women, right? And I just want to clarify, I'm not one of those fat women who's mean to skinny women, right? You know how that's like a thing? And I think it's nonsense, it's garbage, right? Like other women are not my enemy. Um, thank you, yeah, um, all men are, I would say. <laughs> thank you, so brave, hero. Put my face on a t-shirt, wear it to a march. <laughs> right, so here's the thing, right? 37, I don't really have a commercial body. But 57? Woo! Yeah, I think so, right? I think what you're looking at right here is a medication commercial body, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm not mad at it. Big Pharma has deep pockets. Let's go, right? <laughs> yes. Picture me, little gray on top, walking through a park wearing ankle weights, telling everybody about Crestor, just ragging it up. <laughs> I'm ready. I could be on a diabetes one, where they have me doing something that's just barely exercise. <laughs> I'm the captain of a bowling team. <laughs> I got my little shirt, and I get a strike and turn to the camera and go, that was a 10. <laughs> but my A1C is 6.5. <laughs> Talk to your doctor about glucovance today. <laughs> 20 years, you guys are gonna turn on your TV and there I'll be, 
mini golfing for Simvastatin. <laughs> You're gonna be like, wow, good for her for setting weirdly attainable life goals. <laughs> the plan. Until the Crest store money comes in, and it will. I have to figure out a way to make social work work, right? So what do they say if you work in healthcare? They always go, do self-care. Do self-care, because we're not going to pay it or give your benefits. Figure it out so your head doesn't explode. Self-care, right? So my preferred self-care is frivolous vacations. You may wonder, Emily, how do you do that on a social worker salary? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you some financial advice. Write this down. I don't save for retirement. <laughs> we like to cut out quick and dirty heart attack in our 60s in my family. It's affordable, it's accessible, I'm just saying. <laughs> Consider it. It's an option. Right? I flew to Vegas one time to see the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> it was great, yeah. My dad was like, that's a poor use of your money in vacation time. And I was like, yeah, but if 13-year-old me was here right now, she'd be like, you're doing a great job. <laughs> This is exactly how I hoped adulthood would be. <laughs> Keep it up. When does the Delia's catalog get here? <laughs> Let's buy some tiny shirts and huge pants. <laughs> that joke was for me and six other women in their 30s. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. I like, if I'm staying local for my fancy vacations, uh, I like to go up to Portland. Right, Portland, Maine? It's not far, it's great. It's a cool city. They have great food. They're a little like intense about their food though. Right, they have like aggressive meat hipsters up there who own restaurants called like Feed Bag and Hoof. <laughs> right, you go in, it's like a bearded guy with sleeve tattoos who's like, we kill our own animals here every day! <laughs> but he's also wearing like a Ruth Bader Ginsburg t-shirt. <laughs> what kind of person are you? <laughs> he's out back choking a goat, just believe women! <laughs> Am I safe here? I don't, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> the goat stew was really good. <laughs> I've learned something in my travels, right? So I am uh, 30, I'll be 38 next week. Um, thank you, same birthday as Donnie Wahlberg. Uh, I met Jordan Knight once and I told him that and he did not care. <laughs> right, so here's what I've learned at 38, right? So I don't, I don't think I ever want to get married. But I would like to be a widow someday. <laughs> Hear me out. I accidentally booked an older lady bus tour of Iceland. Thanks, Groupon. And I got to tell you guys, postmenopausal widowhood looks like a really nice lifestyle. <laughs> Some of these women were on their third international vacation of the year. They're closing the bars down, get up at 9 a.m. and hike a waterfall. I was like, okay. <laughs> kind of fantasizing about my future, hang gliding somewhere tropical, just like, Bob would have loved this! <laughs> he was a good man. Rest in peace, babe. <laughs> so, here's, have any of you guys been to Iceland? Before, that's where, this is where, right, so... Old Lady Bus Tour of Iceland, best thing I ever did, right? Iceland's fun, right? It's, um, it's quick flight, it's great. Everyone has goofy Viking names, so it's hard to take them seriously, <laughs> right? You at the airport, like, oh, here's my passport, Bjorn Gar. Don't put me in gingerbread jail. I don't know the rules. <laughs> so our tour guide, we had a silver fox tour guide named Asgare. They knew their audience. And uh, he was telling us about global warming and how it's bad, right? And he goes, this glacier used to be. 25 meters from the land and now it's melted so much it's 50 meters from the land and I was like oh my god I wish you had said that in feet so I could care <laughs> I'm also worried about the planet Asgare but I am on vacation and I didn't come here to learn your ridiculous math <laughs> If you want my help, you're gonna have to meet me halfway, however many meters that is. <laughs> I will not be figuring it out on my own, I'll tell you that much right now. I didn't figure out anything when I was there. No math at all. The exchange rate is ridiculous. It's like 10,000 kroner is five bucks. I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> it's giving people 50 bucks for sandwiches. And they try to give me change. I was like, honestly, just keep it. This is not real money. <laughs> the ink is purple and there's a woman on it. What am I supposed to do with this? These coins have holes in them. Give them to your children to make a necklace. I don't want them. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with this. 
So, okay, full disclosure, the first older lady bus tour by accident. The four cents, totally on purpose. <laughs> Only way I travel now, if your grandma's not there, neither am I. <laughs> That's the way to go. Last one I got to go to, January of 2020. The before times, <laughs> right? I got to go to Spain. Have any of you guys been to Spain? Yeah. It's great, right? It's so nice, right? So I asked my friends, what do you want me to bring you back from Spain? And one of my friends said, I want you to bring me back Spanish ham. They have great ham in Spain, right? So I look on the customs website. Number one thing you can't bring into the country. <laughs> ham. <laughs> the list in order is uh, ham, <laughs> explosive devices, <laughs> citrus fruits, guns, mangoes. That's the list, that's the order. Don't bring it, you're not getting it in. I tell my friend, I can't bring you this ham this ham is illegal. <laughs> and she goes, here's what you're gonna do. She goes, you're gonna get the ham vacuum sealed, stack it in your luggage in between the dirty clothes so the dogs don't smell it. I was like, excuse me, we'll circle back to that unnecessary comment. <laughs> what? She goes, walk through customs real cool like nothing's wrong. I was like, uh, no. I don't know what kind of cured meat kingpin you are, but I am not cut out to be a ham mule. And I don't know how to say this delicately, so I'm just gonna say it. Uh, don't ask your fat friend to smuggle ham into the country for you, okay? Because if there's a random ham screening at the airport, I'm getting pulled for that every time. I could have 50 pounds of cocaine on me. And they'd be like, ham, ham, she's hiding ham, find me that ham! Guys, thank you very much. You've been a lot of fun. Enjoy the rest of your night. Give it up again.